I'm Hannah, writer, teacher, editor, and your new mom if the last one isn't working out. This is the first video in a new series where I'm going to talk about how to edit different kinds of writing. So I'm going to talk about the things that you should look for with that particular type of writing, and then I'm going to show examples of me editing those. And of course, the first form we're talking about is my favorite. Flash fiction. So while you're editing flash fiction, there are several things to look for. You might um, try to condense it, so cut out anything unnecessary because the whole point is that it's short. You might want to hit a certain word count if you're either trying to fit it into something or you're submitting to a certain publication that wants, I'm just gonna, there we go. Or you're submitting to a certain publication that wants a length. A lot of them have like specifications like that. Either way, you're gonna want to cut back anything that's unnecessary. So the biggest thing you're editing in flash fiction is cutting out the unnecessary bits. And once you've done that, you're gonna want to make sure that the words you have kept are as strong as possible. So you're gonna look for the most impactful synonym for each word. You're gonna make sure that your images are as strong as you can have them, cut out fillers and filters and things like that. One thing in particular that I look for when I'm editing flash fiction is the ending. You want the ending to be as strong as you can get it. That's very important. So this is easier to do when I'm editing my own stories because I can completely change whatever I want, but um, I'm using examples of other people today. So I don't want to completely rewrite them. So I'll be taking what they have and arranging it to be as strong as possible, but I'm not going to add a lot of content to the stories. Then there are the edits that you're going to make on any kind of writing, which is strength of prose, realistic dialogue, convincing characters, like a satisfactory arc, grammatical issues, that kind of thing. So two of my favorite pals over on Patreon have been nice enough to share their stories for me to use as examples today. Thanks, Connie and Micah. I'm going to edit them and I'm going to be a little more heavy handed with these than I would be if they were like a customer for a critique or a workshop, but I'm not gonna change their stories as freely as I would if it were my own writing. So I'm gonna do enough to give a good example, but I'm not going to rewrite the stories. Um, let's look at Connie's first. So this is Connie's piece. It's called The One. Wow, you actually titled something, Connie? I'm shaken. So I'm gonna read it through one time and then we can start editing it. Conversation hummed around me in the diner as I waited. The waitress cleared her throat, forcing me back to earth. I looked up into her expectant face and faltered. I'm sorry, did you say something? I asked. Her deep brown eyes flashed from mine to the pile of shredded napkin on the table in front of me and back. She let out a slight chuckle and said, I didn't mean to interrupt, I just thought you might want a refill. She held out the coffee pot clutched in her right hand and gave a nearly indiscernible shrug. Oh, yes, please. I lifted my mug, glancing once again toward the entrance at the front of the little building. Hot date, she asked, giving me the full force of her customer service smile. Something like that, I replied. Well, good luck, she said. Let me know if you need anything else, okay? With that, she turned and walked back toward the counter. I watched her leave, her dark ponytail bouncing against the back of her light blue uniform shirt. She really was very striking. Any other day, I might have patted the conversation, tried to get her know her a little bit, but I didn't have time or energy for trivial flirtations today. Not when I knew he would be there any minute. When I heard the little jingle of the bell as the door opened a moment later, I dug my fingernails into the booth seat on either side of my legs and held my breath. A woman stepped across the threshold first and I felt my chest tighten. She glanced quickly around the room and then stepped aside, holding the door ajar as he entered. As soon as I saw him, I relaxed my grip on the seat. He was more beautiful than I could have imagined. His sandy hair stuck up in the front and a pair of rectangular wire frames seemed to almost magnify his wide hazel eyes. Okay, so I think the mislead was that maybe this is a date, but I think it's an adoption. So if this were a critique and not just me using her story to edit, I would uh, comment right here, this is where I figured it out just because that's um, sometimes helpful for writers to know. The woman said something to him, and a crooked grin broke across his face. I felt all of the tension and anxiety melt from my bones in an instant and stood, waving to signal my presence. The woman saw me and smiled, then leaned over and pointed him in my direction. I clasped my hands in front of my chest as he rolled toward me. The mixture of anticipation, fear, and elation pushed at all of my edges, threatening to burst from any point at the first sign of weakness. When his chair came to a stop in front of me, I couldn't fight the emotions back. I reached for his hand and said, Hi, Oliver. I'm your mommy. Okay. So I thought rolled was a weird verb to use. I was like, oh, this is a really casual child about to get adopted, but he's in a wheelchair, so I'm going to leave that. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do just to get out of the way is fix the formatting. If you're sending to an editor or to... Um, a publication you want usually 11 or 12 point font and something like Times New Roman or um, I usually use Calibri actually you want to double space it okay I expanded my uh, recording square so that you guys can see if you don't know how to use um, word so the first paragraph is typically not indented but then after that you're gonna want to indent everything and instead of tabbing or like I just hit tab you can't tell so instead of tabbing or hitting space a bunch of times 
you can go up here and um, indentation. I'm going to do first line and it's going to go half an inch. And that is how you should format it for an editor or for a publication. So you don't put spaces between paragraphs. You just double space the whole thing. The title's okay. I like it because it's, it's like it goes with the mislead and the twist. But like if I were running a literary magazine and I got that as a title, it wouldn't stand out necessarily. So if I think of a better title, I will uh, make suggestions. So this makes the focus conversation. I'm going to rephrase this sentence to something like the diner hummed with conversation. The way it just cleared her throat, forcing me back to earth. I'm going to take that out. I'm also going to take this out. Um, I'm a very liberal cutter. So the diner hummed the conversation. The way it just cleared her throat. I might make this its own paragraph as well. The thing about flash fiction is everything's very, very brief. You're not going to have super long paragraphs. If this were a scene in a novel, I probably wouldn't split it up like that. But since the word count is so low, you can use paragraphs to give it like that extra beat instead of using extra words. So the diner homo conversation, the waitress cleared her throat. I'm sorry, did you say something? I asked. Her deep brown eyes flashed from mine to the pile of shredded napkin on the table in front of me and back. So I'm going to turn this into she chuckled. This doesn't read as like supernatural dialogue for a waitress for me, so I'm gonna change it to sorry to interrupt, and then maybe thought you might want to refill. I'm gonna say she held or she clutched a coffee pot in her right hand. Or mmm mmm wiggled the coffee pot in her hand. That feels more waitressy to me. Oh, yes, please. I lifted my mug, glancing. The word toward usually isn't used correctly because, like, that could be at or to, glancing to the entrance at, at the front of the little building. I mean, it's always going to be at the front. That's what an entrance is. So we're going to take out at the front. I feel like we already know it's a little building because diners are small usually. I'm just going to be glancing at the entrance. Hot date, she asked. Since this is your dialogue tag, it's going to work as a sentence with your dialogue. Hot date, she asked, giving me the full force of her customer service smile. And this is stylistic, but I like to eat, like, I would either capitalize the first letter of each word or just italicize it. Or I'd use full quotation marks instead of um, apostrophes. I'm just going to change that to said. Um, replied is fine, but for some reason that felt weird. Well, good luck. Let me know if you need anything else, okay? I'm going to kind of combine these. So like she turned back to walk to the counter. I watched her leave her dark ponytail. This is um, called a filter. So anytime you're pointing out that it's your character observing something, it kind of um, pulls the reader a little further from the story because we're reminded that, especially in first person, we're reminded that we're not the character, we're reading a story. So I'm going to take that out and just put this up here as description. Her dark ponytail um, bounced against the back. Um, take that out. Her dark ponytail bounced again. And, and since we have dark and light, I'm just gonna take that out since the color matters less than what she looks like. So her dark ponytail bounced against her blue uniform shirt. She really was very striking. I'll leave that. Any other day I might have padded the conversation, tried to get, um, again, this could be stylistic, but semicolons aren't the best. I like M dashes, and a lot of times that is an edit that someone would make in a journal or a magazine. Semicolons are kind of stuffy and formal in most contexts, and it's kind of used for like uh, nonfiction or academic writing. So in prose, M dash is usually the option if you don't want to end a sentence. Any other day I might have padded the conversation, tried to get to know her a bit, but I didn't have the time or energy for trivial flirtations today. The word today, this is in uh, past tense. So today is in present. Actually, I might just take that out all the way. Trivial flirtations feels a little bit stuffy. I'll just, yeah, but I didn't have the time or energy. Not when I knew he would be there any minute. So I'm gonna put something like the little bell above the door jingled. 
I dug my fingernails into the booth seat on either side of my legs and held my breath. This is a good image. I like that. It's good action. A woman stepped across the threshold first and I felt I'm going to take th this is kind of like a little hint. Hey, something else is happening afterwards. So I'm going to take that out. Kind of leave the surprise. A woman stepped across the threshold and um, again, I felt is a filter. So I'm just going to put and my chest tightened. Brrr. She glanced. I, I'm taking out quickly. Basically, when you're using adverbs, think of the verb um, that it's with, and glances are quick. So putting glanced quickly isn't bringing anything to that image. So that's how you know you can cut it. She glanced around the room, and you should almost never use and then because it's essentially the same word twice. So she glanced around the room and stepped inside, holding the door ajar. I'm gonna take this out because, again, like. Now this is much more like it seems like it's just a woman for much longer. And then you see that the little boy comes in. As soon as I saw him, I relaxed my grip on the seat. He was more beautiful than I could have imagined. His sandy hair stuck up in the front and a pair of rectangular wire frames seemed to... Okay, so seemed to is usually filler that you don't need. So with those little nerdy glasses, it does magnify your eyes. So we can just put... Um, his sandy hair stuck up in the front and a pair of rectangular wire frames magnified his wide hazel eyes. The woman said something to him, it's a comma, and a crooked grin broke across his face. I felt all of the tension and anxiety melt from my bones in an instant and stood. Um, so this is another filter, so we'll take out I felt, um, and we'll just put the tension and I actually might take out tension as well so the anxiety no maybe not the tension and anxiety melted from my bones um I stood waving I'm gonna take out to signal my presence just because it's clunky and unnecessary the tension and anxiety melted from my bones I stood waving the woman saw me and smiled um make that a paragraph and put leaning over when you're editing you can really just like search for the word then and take it out almost every time. The woman saw me and smiled, leaning over and pointing him in my direction. I clasped my hands in front of my chest as he rolled toward me. The mixture of anticipation, fear, and elation pushed at all. The word of, typically not necessary, pushed at all my edges, threatening to burst from any point at the first, um, I'm gonna take that. The first sign of weakness, that's a little, not necessarily a cliche, but it's kind of tired phrasing. The mixture of anticipation, fear, and elation pushed it off my edges. I'm also gonna take out the mixture of. So this is a little telly, like labeling emotions is typically something you don't wanna do, but she turned those labels into something tangible. So push it on my edges, threatening to burst. So I'll leave that there. That's a good way to use um, labeled emotions. When his chair came to a stop in front of me, I couldn't fight. Also the word when just kind of weakens the sentence. So his chair came to a stop in front of me. I'm also going to take this out because that's, that's a little telly and we already had all those labeled emotions. So his chair came to a stop in front of me. I reached for his hand and said, hi, Oliver, I'm your mommy. Um, whenever you have some dialogue that you want to be impactful, you can split it up with either a dialogue tag or some action. So, hi, Oliver. I reached for his hand. I'm your mommy. So then, like, this can stand on its own. I expected it to say, I'm your new mommy, but I guess we don't know that this is an adoption. Maybe she's getting her child back after something. All right, let's read it over again. The diner hummed with conversation. The waitress cleared her throat. Just to avoid the repetition, I'm gonna put a waitress. Diner hummed with conversation. A waitress cleared her throat. I'm sorry, I am, and I'm also gonna put. Did you say something? So again, since we have very few words, um, it's easy for it to feel rushed. So we're gonna split up that dialogue with the dialogue tag just to slow it down a little bit without adding anything. I'm sorry, I said, did you say something? Her deep brown eyes flashed from mine to the pile of shredded napkin on the table in front of me and back. I love this image, that's really good. She chuckled, sorry to interrupt. I thought you might want to refill. She wiggled the coffee pot in her hand. Oh, yes, please. I lifted my mug glancing at the entrance. Hot date, she asked, giving me the full force of her customer service smile. Something like that, I said. Well, good luck. She turned to walk back to the counter. Let me know if you need anything else, okay? Her dark ponytail bounced against her blue uniform. Shirt. Mm. Take out uniform, just cause. And I'm also gonna take out shirt. 
Um, that's just like a detail that you don't need, and the image works without it. So her dark ponytail bounced against her back. She really was very striking. I'm also going to like... Okay, so since it's lower, you know that her hair is really long. I think that's a better image than just her shirt being blue. Instead, you kind of know a little bit more about her. She really was very striking. This is voice. Typically, I take out really or very or both, but I think it works with the character voice, so I'm gonna leave that. But those are um, some other filler words to look out for. Any other day, I might have padded the conversation, tried to get to know her a bit, but I didn't have the time or energy. Not when I knew he would be there any minute. Instead of this... Um, I think I'm gonna take that out, but I didn't have the time or energy to focus on her. So this is implying that there's something else she's thinking about, but we don't get that it's a boy. So when the woman walks in, since she was already looking at the waitress, it seems more like it's a date. So that's just delaying the twist a little bit longer, which is usually good. Any other day I might have padded the conversation, tried to get to know her a bit, but I didn't have the time or energy to focus on her. Focus on her at that moment mm, there's still something funky about this i'll come back to it later the little bell above the door jingled i dug my fingernails into the booth seat on either side of my legs and held my breath a woman stepped across the threshold and my chest tightened she glanced around the room and stepped aside holding the door ajar as soon as I saw him, I relaxed my grip on the seat. He was more beautiful than I could have imagined. His sandy hair stuck him in the front, a pair of rectangular wire frames magnified. I'm actually going to take that and put magnifying. Sandy hair stuck him in the front, a pair of rectangular wire frames magnifying his wide hazel eyes. The woman said something to him, and a crooked grin broke across his face. The tension and anxiety melted from my bones. I stood, waving. The woman saw me and smiled, leaning over and pointing him in my direction. I clasped my hands at the front of my chest as he rolled toward me. Anticipation, fear, and elation pushed at all my edges, threatening to burst. His chair came to a stop in front of me. Hi, Oliver. I reached for his hand. I'm your mommy. I think that's great. That's a precious story. Connie, you did a fabulous job. So Connie's is a good example of what I call a feeling story, and I know Micah's is dystopian or something, so I'm using the two examples to kind of show a wider genre range. So let's get to Micah's story. We're going to read it first. The rise of the sun, the sting of my needle, and a wave of relief. The tests always came back blue, safe. With that, I left to search for supplies. Nothing that I found amounted to the feeling that the glowing blue results brought peace of mind it's invaluable in this day and age it's dark now i return home safe and sound just like every other day i test again for the infection blue sunrise sting relief sunrise sting relief i leave and return blue i'm able to continue this cycle for weeks food and water is sparse but it's enough i haven't seen another person since it began but i've seen plenty of the others they're always there today i found more than i bargained for I stumble into my room, barely able to stand. My arms are red and bleeding from scratching them so much. I run water over my wounds. I stagger toward the test, but fall and pass out. Sunrise, sting, red. Okay, so this is uh, a zombie story. I love it. Gonna double space him out here. He doesn't have a title. We're gonna call it blue for now, because that seems to be our recurring image. Okay, the rise of sun, the sting of my needle, and a wave of relief. The tests always came back blue. Okay, um, the test comes back blue. I'm going to take out the word safe because it's a little telly. So the rise of the sun, the sting of my needle, and a wave of relief, the test comes back blue. With that, usually don't need it. Present tense, so this is I leave to... I'm gonna put scavenge feels like a stronger word nothing that i found amounted to the feeling that the glowing blue results brought okay so how about nothing i found just like simplify this sentence nothing i find is better than the glowing blue peace of mind it's invaluable in this day and age in this day and age is a cliche peace of mind it's invaluable and rare we'll put that it's dark now i return home safe and sound just like every other day um safe and sound is also a cliche and just like every other day it's a little bit boring so it's dark and i return home i test again for the infection blue i'm gonna take out again sunrise sting relief sunrise sting relief i leave and return blue i like that um i'm gonna take out i'm able to continue this cycle for weeks just because i feel like that's implied food and water are sparse but it's enough. I haven't seen another person since it began. I've seen plenty of the others. They're always there. I'm going to put something like they are always there. Um, some days they seem faster, maybe. Today I found more than I bargained for. Eh. I stumble into my room, barely able to stand. How about I stumble into my room, 
blood trickling from my forearm. Just because red and bleeding, kind of redundant from scratching them so much. A little telly. Blood trickling from my forearm. Um, just gonna put, I rinse my wounds. Maybe some detail like numb floating over my body. Something like that. And then maybe, he already stumbled so we're not gonna stagger. I reach for my box of test strips my fingers brushing it before the world goes dark and then maybe something dramatic like i don't feel my head hit the concrete floor yeah sunrise sting red hmm all right let's see what we got the rise of the sun, the sting of my needle, and a wave of relief. The test comes back blue. I leave to scavenge for supplies. Nothing I find is better. Maybe there's still something funky about this sentence. Nothing I find tops the sight of glowing blue. Something like that. Peace of mind. It's invaluable and rare. I might throw another M dash right there. I'm a fan of the M dash, if you can't tell. It's dark and I return home. I test for the infection. Blue. Sunrise sting relief. Sunrise sting relief. I leave and return. Blue. Food and water are sparse, but it's enough. I haven't seen another person since it began, but I've seen plenty of the others. They're always there. Some days they seem faster. I stumble into my room. I'm gonna put this on its own just because again using paragraphs is a great way to give emphasis and to slow down a scene without adding additional words they're always there some days they seem faster i might actually want to put a filter in right here so some days i think they get faster mm. some days i think they run faster some days i swear they run um, there we go. I stumble into my room, blood trickling from my forearm. I rinse my wounds, numb, floating over my body. The gist is there, and I can come back and fix it. Sometimes when you're editing, you'll, like, know what kind of feeling you want to have somewhere, but the phrasing isn't quite right yet so that's kind of a placeholder but i kind of want him to be having like an out-of-body experience with his fear and the blood loss and stuff so i'll leave that there for now i reach for my box of test strips my fingers brushing it before the world goes dark i don't feel my head hit the concrete floor sunrise sting red okay yeah i think that's a that's a good revision for now i usually will write a draft of a story and then i'll let it sit for a couple of days i'll come back and revise it let it sit a couple of days and then i'll start sending it out to people to get their thoughts and then revise them again so don't try to feel like you have to do it all at once because sometimes it just needs to sit with you okay that was micah's story very good micah i love it thank you for sharing that's all i got i hope there was some helpful information on ways that you can edit flash fiction if you'd like some more flash fiction content my book, Little Birds, is almost all flash fiction. You can order that on Amazon in ebook and paperback. I also have a Skillshare class all about writing flash fiction, and there's a link in the description to a two-month free trial so you can try it out and you can watch that class. And if you think you need a little extra help to get your story to where you want it to be, you can go to hannaleekidder.com slash services and look at the critique and workshop packages. And if you want me to edit your story in a video, go to patreon.com slash Also, thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video. Connie and Micah's uh, social links are going to be in the description. Go give them a follow. They're good people. They're really good writers, and I love them. So, yeah, see you next week. Bye.